Hey there YouTube, it's me, Broken Terrain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do these little modular farmer's fences. They're great for adding a ton of scatter around all kinds of different terrain. So join me and I'll show you how we do them right after the drop. A good place to start is a mini for scale. So I've got myself a mini here and I'm using my matchsticks. In fact, this whole craft is based around these craft matchsticks. Once I have a height that I've decided on, I will get to work texturing them with a coarse sandpaper Make sure you get all the edges and then I'm going to mark one of those matchsticks in half and cut it. And then it's just a bunch of texture and trimming. You can see I have the matchsticks laid out in bundles of three. I'm going to use one from each bundle and cut it in half for the height of the fence and the other two pieces are going to serve as the length or the rails for the fence. Using one matchstick I can quickly cut the others to size. Once everything's been trimmed, I'm going to get my parchment paper. Uh, that way I can glue these down and I don't have to worry about them sticking to the table or any other surface. Once I like the general position of my matchsticks, I'm going to use my Eileen's Tacky Glue and with a pair of tweezers maneuver those long boards uh, in place and stick them to the support. Then with a couple dabs of glue on the other side, I will put the pieces together, make sure they look relatively squ uh, square, but don't worry too much because these are supposed to be farmer's fences. And if you've seen uh, farmer's fences before, you'll know that uh, time and weather uh, takes quite the toll on them. So if they don't look perfect, that's okay. That's only going to reinforce the fact that these are weathered farmer's fences that have been in the field for some time. A little sped up footage of me putting together several Again, just the two uprights with the two boards uh, connecting them in the center. I ended up doing quite a few of these because I wanted a large amount of fencing. And considering how simple the project is, I recommend you do quite a few as well you'll regret not uh, making a batch. At this point, I thought I'd get kind of fancy with it and create some little swinging doors. Uh, this would give us um, uh, a way to get through the fence for players that weren't interested in destroying their way through it and would offer some fun storytelling notes. So I've created two little squares and uh, I've placed one of those little doors against the fence found where I wanted it to hang 
and then with my hole punch or my little pin push whatever the heck you call that thing I'm going to push some just some very thin holes into the side of the fence and in this way I'll be able to attach the doors I've got those little eyelet uh, jewelry bits I'm gonna trim them on an angle so they're a little sharp on the end and that's gonna help me uh, glue and then push them into the wood I had a lot of trouble doing the doors and this is probably the third method I had come up with them and to be perfectly honest this method functions but I can't fully recommend it the doors are incredibly fragile um, I had them break on me several times while creating this craft. I would suggest to you if you want to try the farmer's fencing, and I do recommend doing the fencing. If you want to attempt some form of gate, um, a better method should be used. And I would love to hear from you uh, in the comments if you end up uh, making yourself a set of farmer's fences and you come up with a better solution to the gates, uh, let me know. I would love to take a look and maybe redo uh, some of these pieces. Anyway, back to the video, you can see I've got the little door frame all glued out. I'm gonna measure and create a little cross beam just to add a little fun decoration and visual interest to the gate. And once it fits, a little bit of Eileen's tacky glue in either corner and some tweezers help me to get it into place. All right, with the second one down, it's time to actually create some hinges for the doors to sit um, and swing on those little eyelets we've glued. So I'm going to cut very small pieces of craft stick and glue them to the edges of the door so that the gate uh, hangs where I want it to relative to the position of the fence. And once these two tabs have dried, I will go back in with the ends of a toothpick. I'll cut those ends and then glue those ends to those tiny little supports glued onto the door. And again, not a uh, not a very strong method, um, but it works. <laughs> kind of. No, it works. It works. It just uh, man, I had all kinds of illusions of grandeur when I thought about making the swinging gate and. Uh, Oh, what I ended up working with, uh, it works, but. All right, now onto the, onto the basing. I've got some smaller washers. I think these are half inch. Uh, I didn't want these bases to be a full inch wide, so I didn't use my usual one inch fender washers for weight, but. These little, these little washers did just fine. Uh, then I'm gonna pour the hot glue down over the washer to hide it. And later,
heater on, I'll go down the center of the base and apply some hot glue for texture as well. All right, we'll speed that footage up and you can see I'm just gluing the fences down onto the base and this is where they stop being a collection of glued matchsticks and start becoming fence terrain. Make sure they are standing up. For my gate sections, I'm going to make them uh, very big double pieces. So one side uh, will be just uh, a standard fence and the other side is a piece of fence with the hinge for the gate. And just to eyeball this, you certainly don't want it to be so tight that the gate can't sit or swing open, um, but it should be close enough so that it looks like when the gate is closed that will in fact impede animals and, and other people from getting through the opening. Once everything's been uh, glued down, it's time to cut that chipboard out and just cut close. Um, I'm going to decorate the bases with some uh, clumped uh, foliage and, and other bits, but I do want them to look like a fence line. And that's going to help us. If you've ever seen actual farmer's fence line, it's rare that they grab their weed whip and go down the line and have a nice trimmed fence line. Usually there's weeds, tall grass, bushes along the fence line, and we're gonna mimic that with ours. Now that everything's been trimmed, we're going to take our hot glue gun and we're going to lay some texture down in the middle. While I've got the sped up footage of me dropping some texture down with my hot glue gun, I'm going to take this time to thank you for watching this video and for letting me entertain you for just a little bit. If you feel like I've done a, a good job, please hit that like button and that subscribe button too. And that way you get notifications Whenever I drop a new video, I would uh, absolutely love to continue entertaining you. Thank you so much. With the hot glue gun step all taken care of, it's time to cover these bases in white PVA glue. I just dump a healthy amount down on each base and using a paintbrush, I spread it around so that I can in turn take my craft sand and sprinkle the sand all over the base. The glue is going to grab hold of that sand and when it dries it's going to put a wonderful texture down. Here's more footage of me doing the same thing with one of the gate pieces. Uh, and here's a shot of all the pieces 
having been flocked with the crab sand. Once the glue is dried, I'll go back in with my Black Magic Craft base coat, half uh, acrylic black paint, and half matte Mod Podge. And I'm just gonna make sure it gets into all those cracks and crevices. This is really gonna lock down that sand. It is a, I would say it's a necessary step, so please don't skip it. And now we just gotta get the rest of them done. Just so I don't bore the heck out of you, I'll just cut to a picture of them all being done. You're welcome. Now it's time to pull out my Mississippi mud and give all those bases a nice coat. This is going to serve as my base color for my groundwork. Uh, try to avoid the fence as best as possible, but uh, don't worry too much about it. Uh, a little Mississippi mud on the bottom of your fence is just going to look like mud and dirt, and it'll still be extremely believable. So don't worry for a second. Overall, uh, this is a very easy craft. Uh, a touch fragile but very easy. Uh, don't, don't feel like you um, can't try this one out. This one is just very simple and super effective when on the table. Now it's time for a dry brush of Honey Brown. Uh, load that uh, brush with your paint Get most of it off on a paper towel and then come in and just hit those raised areas. The honey brown looks great against the Mississippi mud and creates a wonderful uh, dirty muddy effect. I will go back in uh, with glue and cover them with glue once they're dry and sprinkle them with the grass flock. Uh, normally I would show you video of that, but uh, I lost that video, so I'm just letting you know. Once the dry brush has dried, I'm gonna go in with my brown wash. I'm gonna hit the fences and the bases with this dark brown wash. It's gonna pull out all those natural wooden uh, tones and and the the grain within the mass matchsticks and that grain that we artificially placed there with the sandpaper and it's gonna make it look like weathered wood very simple paint job for these pieces As I mentioned earlier, here they are with the green grass flock already on them. And I've pulled out my bag of decorative moss and my clump foliage. And I'm gonna decorate the heck out of these bases. Pinching and pulling apart some clump moss and clump foliage, I mean. Uh, I'm going to hot glue to the base. I start out by putting it where the fence posts are and then I will slowly work down through the middle. And I wanted to get a little fancy with some of these and really turn this into a fun flocking project. So I'm going to get pieces from the 
uh, florist moss or my moss bag and I'm going to try to create some interesting looking vegetation. I've got a strange little bit of, of green moss here and I'm going to fold and, and pull pieces off until I get them in a small little tuft or clump and then I'm going to glue that uh, tuft at one of the fence posts to make it look like some interesting kind of weed or flower. I'll go back in and uh, trim some of the ragged pieces with some scissors, decorate with more clump foliage. This um, was a very fun part of the project and I recommend you absolutely have a blast uh, flocking the bases of these farmers fences. Um, unfortunately it is not a very easy thing for me to get on film. As you can tell I leave the frame very often to actually glue and place pieces. I've shown you some of my better shots and hopefully with my explanation you can get a sense as to what I'm doing and what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, don't be afraid to glue some of that clump down in the center of the fence line. It's just going to fill the base out and really separate these from your game mat and really uh, push home the fact that these are in fact obstacles. Not only do they look like neat scatter and fill out your table, but they'll also impede movement and create many different tactical decisions for your particular battle or skirmish. So, uh, flock away. I only recorded myself flocking a couple of the bases, it really proved to be difficult to keep this stuff on camera. I apologize. I also ended up using some of the yellow uh, lichen, lichen, in the mossy florist pack and you'll be able to see some of that bright yellow on the bases at the uh, at the ending of the video when I have everything laid out. Once the bases have been flocked the way you like it's time to create a watered down mixture of PVA and just go in and and dab that glue into everything. You want that clump foliage to stay locked in place and all the time you've spent adding all that detail needs to stick around. You don't want that falling off and, uh, and getting everywhere. So uh, apply a nice watered down coat of PVA glue and when it dries if you feel like things haven't um, locked down well enough, then by all means do a second or even third coat as you need to. Better safe than sorry, right? Once dry, I'm going to turn to my dependable apple barrel vanilla ice cream. I'm going to do a very, very light highlight of the edges. So fill your brush with the color, then using a paper towel, wipe most of it off, 
and then go back in and highlight the edges and texture of the wooden fence. This is just going to help everything pop on the table and really create a uh, nice sharp dynamic look for the fencing itself. The dry brushing the highlights is the final step in this project. And once completed, we can go to the table and take a look at these wonderful pieces of scatter in action. Here we are, traveling up the old road, surrounded by farmers fencing. And our heroes are having a chat with a hog farmer who's having trouble with an insect infestation. Get in there, heroes, and help that poor farmer out. And let's just take a real good look. You can see I've got a, a broken fence there. Um, I took advantage of one of them falling apart, snapped a couple pieces, and now I have an interesting looking piece of uh, fence scatter. Uh, make yourself quite a few of these. Uh, you can see I've got a little uh, roadway all fenced off. Um, but real quickly, just pick them up, move them about. And now I've got these farm, this farmer and his pigs all fenced in. Wonderful. Real easy, simple craft. And it's going to make a huge difference on your game table. So... Get going. Make yourself some fences. And thank you for watching. Um, hit the button to subscribe. And if you like this video, please check out some, uh, some more of my videos. Until next time, like each other, love each other, and craft on.